Hi everyone, it's Vicky here and welcome back. Today I'm making a card and I'm going to show you how you can achieve the sepia look. First I'm going to show you the stamp set I, I will be working with. So this is uh, Across the Miles, it's by Waffle Flower and there are also matching dies available. For my background I'm going to use this pattern paper with this old map and this comes from this paper pad by Seven Gypsies. This is a very old collection, it is discontinued but you can use any type of map that you might have at home for your background. Now out of this map I'm going to cut out a rectangle and for that I'm using my uh, rectangle stitching, stitched dies. I'm going to place one inside the other so that I can create a frame. So I'm going to decide where exactly I want my frame to be. I'm going to place them down. I'm going to use some post-it tape just to secure them down. And then I'm going to run them through my die cutting machine. So now I have two pieces, the inside uh, rectangle uh, piece as well as the frame. And I'm not going to throw any of them. I'm going to use them both for my background. So one fits perfectly inside the other. And um, what I love about this technique is that uh, you have a continuous design on the inside and on the outside on your frame. So now for the inside I'm going to go over it with Distress Oxide ink. For that I'm using my blending tool and I'm uh, very softly applying some ink on top. I am using Broken China by the way and by adding this tint of color I am not covering up the design which is great because when I am going to place it inside that frame you will get that continuous design but at the same time I am going to have a different color so it's going to stand out even more. Now I am going to apply some water on top just to activate the ink. This is going to oxidize the ink and it's going to look even more old. I am going to blot the excess uh, water with uh, a piece of uh, cloth and now I am going to use my heat gun to make sure that everything is dry. Now I am working directly on my card base. This is cardstock by Nina. It is a uh, desert storm. You will find links down below. I have uh, cut uh, out and uh, scored my card base. So that is a standard card. That is 4 and a quarter by 5 and a half. Now I am uh, going with my blending tool all over the edges and I am uh, applying some distress oxide ink and that is actually vintage photo. So since I am going for a vintage look and I want everything to look sepia, vintage photo is obviously the perfect touch. So you see how beautiful it looks once I place the frame on top. Now I want to add that touch of color on my frame as well so everything uh, binds together. And uh, for that I am using again the same Distress Oxide ink as well as my blending tool. I am going all over the edges, touching up only the edges. The, on the outside of the frame as well as on the inside of the frame. These are uh, small touches that you do on your cards but uh, really make a big difference. And I'm also going to use Vintage Photo to touch up the edges of the inside panel. And always remember that if you have different elements for one project, if you touch it up with the same color of ink, then uh, it actually brings everything together. This is a tip that I usually follow for my art journal layouts, but it's uh, perfect for cards as well. Now I have added some uh, foam tape at the back of my frame. I am going to peel it off and I am going to stick it on top of my card base. And if you are a fan of this look, if you love uh, vintage uh, projects and uh, sepia colors, then uh, Vintage Photo Distress Ink is perfect for this job. I cannot recommend it enough. And you can have it either on uh, Distress Oxide uh, Ink or the regular old uh, Distress uh, Ink. Now I am going to add some uh, tape adhesive at the back. I am using my ATG gun there and I am going to uh, stick that inside that frame. And notice that I am not too shy with adhesive at the back and that's just because I have sprayed this piece of paper with water so it's not completely flat. Now as I am sticking it there you will see that I get dimension so the frame is slightly raised but the inside is um, totally flat on top of my card base. I am going to use my bone folder to make sure that I press down the edges and I have a beautiful background ready for my focal point.
Now I'm going to work on uh, the focal points. I am going to stamp the clouds. And these clouds were uh, combined, but I don't want them to be so close to each other. So I'm going to separate them. And I'm also going to stamp the hot air balloon, as well as the big banner, where I am going to stamp my sentiment. I'm using my Misty to do the stamping so I can stamp more than one images at once. And notice that I am going to stamp everything on craft cardstock. So if you are going for a vintage look, then make sure to avoid white cardstock. It's so much easier if you start with craft. Now I'm going to stamp everything with archival ink and that's coffee. And I am doing that because I want to have a brown uh, line around my images instead of black. This is going to add even more on that vintage look. So I'm going to stop that a couple of times in order to get a nice impression. And archival link is not going to smudge or smear when I will use my alcohol markers to color everything later on. I'm going to use the matching dies to cut out everything and these are going to leave a border around the images. If you want to avoid that you can use your scissors but just because I'm working on a craft cardstock instead of white it's not going to look as if it's a sticker. And you will see how I am going to bring everything together. So now I'm going to use three different uh, colors of markers and I'm using my Spectrum Noirs here and you can see the colors that I'm using on your screen. And after doing some tests, I decided that these three colors give the perfect sepia look and they match great with vintage photo. So I am uh, going to use the darker one to add some shadows on the craft paper. I'm going to use the mid, uh, middle color just to blend it out a little bit and then I'm going to color everything else with the lighter one. So you can see how my cloud is looking nice and vintage and I'm going to color everything only with those three colors. So I'm going to go ahead and do the next cloud, adding the shadows and as you can see I am starting from darker to lighter. And if I need to darken up some edges a little bit I go back to the darker one. So here I'm going to add my shadows first. I'm going to blend it out with the middle color. And then with the lighter one, I'm going to cover up the whole area. So to get this vintage sepia look, all you need to do is to stamp all your images with brown ink on top of craft cardstock. And then you need to use three different colors to color everything. All colors are uh, pale browns, as you can see, and um, I'm not going to introduce any other color. And a uh, uh, thing that you need to keep in mind is that when you are working with alcohol markers on top of uh, craft cardstock, then um, it's going to look in the beginning as if it's darker than it's going to be actually when it dries. So keep that in mind. Now I will go ahead and color my uh, hot air balloon. Again, doing the exact same thing with those three colors. And uh, the craft cardstock that I am working on is by Nina and um, it doesn't bleed at all when you are working with your alcohol markers. It's the perfect cardstock, I believe, for this look. Now that all my images are uh, colored and uh, to bring everything together, again I am touching up the cutouts with a uh, vintage photo. I haven't touched the blending tool on my ink pad at all, so I'm just working with whatever it's left on my blending tool from previous work. This is a great way to cover up that uh, border that has been left out when I used the matching dies to cut out everything. I am trying to decide where everything is going to go and then I'm going to commit and stick everything down. Now I'm going to add some foam squares at the back of my hot air balloon and uh, some tape adhesive at the back of the cloud so I get different layers on top of my card. And actually one of the clouds is going to be behind that hot air balloon. But of course, before I stick down the banner, I need to stamp the sentiment. For that, I'm going to combine two words from the stamp set. So I end up having a sentiment that says, Bon Voyage. And as I did with the rest of my images, I am using the same ink pad to stamp the sentiment. So that's archival link in coffee color. And now I'm going to stick this banner at the bottom of my card, on top of that frame. And I just love how everything came together. 
And now, of course, this is totally optional. I just love that uh, touch of shine in different areas of my card. So I'm using my shimmer pen and I'm touching up the clouds as well as a, little, a few details on top of my hot air balloon. And that was the card for today. I hope you had fun and got inspired. And if you did, don't forget to leave me a comment as well as give me a thumbs up on my YouTube channel. Don't forget that you can find the full list of all the supplies that I'm using down below in the description area as well as on my blog. Thank you all for watching and see you next time!